I'm Jancy Despain with Bright Idea Tutoring. Today I'm going to take you through a tutorial on aromaticity and Hochul's rule. This is a topic that comes up in second semester organic chemistry and it gives a lot of students some trouble but actually it doesn't have to be that way. It's a really simple topic that can be taught in a series of four steps that you can go through in almost a flow chart kind of process. So I'm going to show that to you today. And if you have any questions or run into any problems when you're going through your homework, just shoot me an email and we'll set up a Skype session and I can answer any questions that you have. So let's say that you were given an organic molecule and you're asked to determine is it aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic. The first thing that you want to do is just ask yourself, is that molecule a ring? If it's not a ring, you already know it's non-aromatic. But if it is a ring, you're going to go on and ask yourself the second question. Are all the carbons in the ring sp2 hybridized? Now, there's a few important words in this sentence. First of all, are all the carbons in the ring sp2? If there are other atoms in the ring, oxygens or nitrogens, we don't care about their hybridization. They might be sp2 or sp3, and it does not matter. We only care about the carbons. Second of all, it's carbons in the ring that matter. If there's carbons outside the ring, maybe on a branch, they don't matter at all. It's just carbons that are in the ring structure. So then let's review sp2 real quick. For the purposes of aromaticity, you're going to be able to tell that a carbon is sp2 first if it's touching a double bond. So it'll probably look like this. Or if it's charged or a radical. So you might have a carbocation, a carb anion or, like I said, a radical. Those are your choices of sp2 carbons. And if you have anything else, it's probably not sp2. So if you look at your carbons in your ring, and some of them are not sp2, you know you have a non-aromatic compound. But if all the carbons in your ring are sp2, then you move on to number three, which is, is the ring planar. Now, almost every time, once you've gone through all these steps, you're going to have a planar compound. There's really only one type of compound that's going to be non-planar. And if it is planar, you're going to move on to step four. If it's non-planar, it's going to be non-aromatic. So let me take a minute and show you what a non-planar compound looks like and how you're going to know. Really, a non-planar compound is all about having hydrogens on the interior of the compound. If you look at your typical compound, here's naphthalene, here's benzene. If we were to draw the hydrogens on these compounds, they're on the exterior. And I'm not going to draw them in, I'm just going to give you little tick marks to show you where they are. They're on the outside. But take a look at this guy. So we go around, we put our hydrogens on, and look right here. There's a hydrogen on the interior. And another one. These two hydrogens here and here are in each other's space, causing steric hindrance. They're actually poking right at each other. And what the molecule does in order to avoid that is shift the two sides of the ring out of each other's plane. So it becomes non-planar. And a non-planar molecule actually forces its p orbitals out of alignment, which prevents the electron flow from happening smoothly. In other words, it's non-aromatic. It prevents aromaticity. So if you want to know if a molecule is planar or not, just look at its hydrogens. If all the hydrogens are on the exterior, it's planar, which means you can go on to step four. And if there are some hydrogens on the interior, 
that means it's non-planar, which means it's non-aromatic. So let's talk about step four. Step four is count the pi electrons, and then you're going to apply Huckel's rule. Now, counting the pi electrons, just like everything we've talked about so far, is not a complicated process, but you need someone to show you how to do it. That's what I'm going to do in my next video, Aromaticity Part 2. So just click on over there, and I'll meet you there. Thanks for watching.